All right, welcome back, everybody. I pray all is well with everybody as we thank the good Lord for so much. Now my title says, How Do You Handle the Tough Questions from People? How do we handle the tough questions from people, especially unbelievers? Let me give a shout out to my sister, Evangelist Sheila. And we still answering questions. All these videos I'm doing are answering questions. And uh, beautiful questions, Sister Sheila. And I like that question because it's very powerful. Because one thing is, Sister, we see so many people, you know, fight about the Word of God. But when you're dealing with an um, unbeliever, man... I did an old video on her sister called Stop Wasting All Your Time on an Unbeliever because an unbeliever will always have their own word a lot of times. Their mind be already made up and you will find yourself getting mad, you know. Or if you're not careful, you let them talk to you long enough, you might wind up believing what they believe. And the Bible shows us how we got to keep it moving. We pray for people, you know. We direct them to the scriptures in the Bible. And after that, you have done your job, you know, Sister Sheila, Evangelist Sheila. And I deal with a lot of people, period, on camera, you know, on, on her. And I deal with a whole lot, you know, out in public or even outside of the church or maybe at the food bank. It don't matter where I'm at. I find myself a lot of times having to deal with, you know, the Word of God. Now here's the thing, sister, to get, in, to get on with this question. The ones, this is the thing, the ones that's asking the questions, you got to look at it like this. Okay, they asking me all these questions, but do they have the same mind frame as me? when I get ready to answer the question. And the majority of that time, uh, to answer that question most of the time, it's going to be no. Because how can a believer and an unbeliever look at the Spirit the same way when the unbeliever don't know nothing about the Spirit? Haven't even, you know, came into the Holy Spirit. But yet and still they firing off what they think or what somebody else have told them. So I find out a lot of times dealing with especially a lot of people on her because I deal with atheists also on her who are very intelligent but they're always going to tell you this and what they think and you know scientists say this they caught on what man say and, and I just tell them where the scriptures at pray for them and go on about my business because I'm not, I'm not the one that's going to be sitting on her you know arguing with people y'all have never seen me doing videos making videos trying to go off on somebody or call somebody name out and telling them they dumb and stupid because they don't believe what I believe. Now, I have a lot of people do me like that, call me false prophet and all kind of stuff because they won't go to the scriptures, but that's fine also. Hey, they even call Jesus a devil. So if they call Jesus a devil and, and a lot of people didn't believe Jesus, why am I going to sit up and worry about folks who don't believe me? So you see what I'm saying, sister? I understand this question and I can relate to this question so much because I see people fall out all the time behind this stuff. See, like the Bible tells us, I'm going to say this again because I want to, I meant to say this as natural man. Let me say it like the scripture because natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. It's foolish to them because it has to be spiritually discerned. That's why I said a minute ago, so if they don't have the Holy Spirit, how can they understand the Holy Spirit? you got to just say what the Word of God say. Like I say, pray for them and keep on moving. Paul told Timothy to watch out for people like this. See, I can fire off questions all day long to a lot of Christians, and it's sad that they'll sit back and tell you tradition. They'll tell you what mama said, what grandpa taught, what the deacon said, what the pastor said. But a lot of them, I'm not saying all Christians, but so many Christians cannot break down the word of God. And I believe if you're going to be a teacher, 
then you need to also be answering questions. That's why I'm in my answering question modes right now. I'll give you an example. I look at Mini Man. I associate with my brother who I love so much, Brother PP Drawings. Sister Lady D, y'all heard me say those names a lot because we encourage each other every day, not putting nobody down in no kind of way. But I have so many people also that I just can't call out names, but I'm calling out main names because if I see Mini Man in his video and then I get through looking at the video and if I don't if I don't understand something correctly I'm going to ask Mini Man's questions or I might say brother Mini Man what did you mean right here when you said this because I'm not understanding and if Mini Man turns around and tells me well JT don't worry about that I'm going to say something wrong with Mini Man and how dare you Mini Man call yourself a teacher and you don't want to answer my question that I, that's what I'm going to do now I don't know about everybody else I'm just speaking for me or if Lady D say something that's out of line that that's different you know according to the Bible I'm going to say well Lady D you need to explain yourself and she turns around and say don't worry about it I'm going to wonder what's wrong with you Lady D I'm just using y'all for an example you know or PP drawings who who are always firing off so many questions. I mean answers. Let me let me say this right. PP drawings have not dodged no questions, no answers. That man be on it. We love you, big brother. I'm using you for an example, PP drawings. If he send like he send me these comments all the time, and I say, well, what do you mean by that? He turn around and say, don't worry about that. That's something I came up with. If they cannot direct me to the scripture, and they supposed to be child, children of the Lord, then what does that say about them? So that's why when you see me doing all this teaching, understand that I also answer pretty much questions every day. That's why I say, you know what, let me just take time out for a while to do, not piano tutorials, <laughs> People just, bro, they blowing me up about these piano tutorials. I have had my time of doing tutorials. So why not now let me do, a, a, let's say, amount of time of answering a lot of questions. But y'all know I answer questions pretty much every day anyway and all during the year. But now I'm on a time now where it's just all about answering questions. Like you asked me, sister, how do we handle these tough questions from people, these and, and unbelievers? There is your answer. Paul talked about this in Corinthians. It's going to boil down to the spirit. And this is why you 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 just, it's snowing outside. you spinning your wheel. You ever got in your car and, and, and tried to really go in the snow and you spinning your wheels in the snow? That's what you're doing a lot of times with unbelievers. you just spinning your wheels in the snow. You're not going nowhere. Because they keep on talking about what they believe. And you talking about the spirit. And they talking about what they believe. So you just still stuck from square one. So a lot of times you just got to keep it moving, my sister. And it, and 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 you let me tell you something because I know quite a few Muslims. I used to work around a lot of them. If you ever go to South Dallas down there, you know Muslims is out bold. They hey, they will tell you they will come out in front of your car. But you ever wonder why Muslims, a lot of Muslims can tell you so much about Christianity because they have studied your religion. They have studied so much, and they can show you everything. It's some Muslims that know the Bible more than the Christians do. And you sitting up here dealing with a Christian that don't know nothing. Excuse me, y'all, but I just got to say it it's like I got to say it. A lot of Christians that don't know nothing, not all of them. And you wonder why the Muslim, well, man, maybe I need to follow the Muslim then. Look at how many followers Farrakhan got. But that same Farrakhan will tell you and confuse you and say, I am a Christian. Then he'll say, I am a Muslim. I'm both of them, and I don't make no apology. And you got all these people following. You got so many people don't know what to believe. Should I believe in the Muslims? Should I believe the Christianity? Is it about the Christians? Should I follow the, what is it, uh, what's the name? Muhammad Elijah? Allah? I'm confused, and this is why you stay confused, because the thing is, we all got a choice to make. The question is, who are you serving? Who are you following by? And I don't have nothing against Farrakhan. I don't have nothing against Muslims. I don't have nothing against nobody. 
my thing is we all got a choice to make man I can listen to that Farrakhan and hear a whole lot of truth but at the same time I know where to draw the line at with Farrakhan I can listen to anybody but I know where to draw the line at with them because why I have the spirit and I know what the Bible says and I can tell when somebody you know is talking about the true word of God I can go to the corner right there and that drunk man that used to be a pastor of a church he still know the word he just choose to be homeless and drunk he fell off and let life get the best of him but the word is still planted in that drunk man who, who was a pastor who was teaching Bible study and he still knows just because he's a drunk don't mean he don't know the word of God I'm just making a point so back to your question how do you handle these tough questions from people it's simple just like I've been saying in the, in the video here you tell them the scriptures if they want to get all off sidetrack with you and fuss and fight you keep moving you answer the questions with the word of God and you keep moving let me ask you something sister see I could do this on her all day every day if I wanted to just five questions if Mary this is these are the type of questions people ask me every day if Mary was a virgin at the time of Jesus birth when did Jesus have two other brothers two older brothers we can say just something to think about isn't it questions that you think people wouldn't ask you they would and as a child of God you'd be like ooh I never thought about that question not saying you never thought about it. I'm just using this question as an example because the Bible did teach us that Jesus had brothers but how is it you know once again if Mary was a virgin at the time of Jesus birth when did Jesus have two older brothers let me ask you another crazy question if the Lord loved us, just pretend I'm one of these unbelievers coming up to you out of love. And I'm talking just in my calmest voice. If I say, Sister Evangelist Sheila, you know, I'm not all the way there. I'm really not a believer, but I'm, you know, I'm studying. I'm trying to get there. But I got something to ask you, Sister um, Sheila. If the Lord loved us so much and he gave us free will, then why would he turn around and be angry at us and don't let us see heaven if we don't want to do what he tells us to do when he didn't create robots so he gave me free will but I choose to do what I want to do and not serve him so why did he even create me that's just like why should I even be alive if he gonna create me and then get mad at me for doing what I want to do but he the one gave me free will why would I want to serve somebody like that sister Sheila you gotta be ready for those kind of answers what are you going to do? Scratch your head and be like, uh, I, I, you know what, I'll get back with you. There's some people out here asking some, 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 tough, some tough questions, and I love them. And I deal with them every day. Just like when a, when, a, when a person asks me, especially a Christian, can a Christian lose their salvation? Can a pastor lose their salvation? I'm ready for those type of questions. Because believe it or not, it's all in the Word of God. I got another one I want to ask you, and I'll close after this. You, you're a Bible studier, okay? There is a man talked about in the Bible, Melchizedek, or some might pronounce it Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, however you want to pronounce it. My question to you is, I'm just using another question, is Jesus and Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, Melchizedek, are they the same person? Because how can he be the Prince of Salem? How can he have the same names called as Jesus? Are they two different people? Got another question. If Jesus was the Son of God, why is he called the Son of Man? Also, these are questions that people ask us. So you got to be ready to answer questions from believers and non-believers. But don't get mad and frustrated and waste time trying to debate back and forth with an unbeliever because believe it or not you got people that's in the spirit that have some powerful questions also 
So I hope that makes sense. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. The lights is back on for a minute. So I said, let me come back and do this video. I told you I'm going to be at the house all day, you know, spending time with y'all. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Y'all have a wonderful night and stay safe. Peace.